We're back with our friend Jonathan McKee and his new book, The Teen's Guide to Social Media and Mobile Devices. Jonathan, tip one, love the one you're with. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Talk about that. It sounds like a song. Yeah, it does. We really should make that a song. Yeah, no, it, that's that whole concept, uh, you know, this, there's so much research on this. As a matter of fact, Sherry Turkle, New York Times bestselling author of Reclaiming Conversation, talks about this with adults. Mm. This isn't just a teen problem. This is a people problem. We love our devices so much. And Sherry said in one of her books or articles, I remember her saying that the mere presence of the phone on the table or in the periphery of your vision of two people, you go out to eat and you've got the phone there. It's kind of like, uh, there's this, you're important to me unless this rings. Yes. And that chapter is really sharing some of that research actually and talking to a frustration that teenagers know so well. The thing that you shared when you opened this is, you know, about half of teenagers are kind of frustrated with how much this device is taking mm. over. And so that's really saying, hey, don't forget the people you're in the room with. Mm -hmm. um, it's a self-esteem thing too. Right now, there's a spike in depression, uh, uh, more than we've ever seen before. And what's happened is, Self-esteem's always been a tough thing and, and peer pressure's been a tough thing, but now we have this device where if conversation is difficult, which conversation mm -hmm. can be difficult, we have this device we can pull out totally. and just kind of all of a sudden get absorbed in because it, it feels better than having to try to do this conversation, which is very difficult. So now, you know, you've got this escape mechanism, which and so it's spiraling, it makes it worse. We be, we're becoming more antisocial. So that's trying to nip this in the bud and talk the about The irony it. that it's called social media and yeah. it's made us so much more antisocial is, yeah, in a whole other realm. Uh, I love this. Nothing you post is temporary. Yeah. We need to remind our children of that when it comes to Snapchat, especially, which is this, you know, social media platform where you think everything disappears. But you make a really good point. Everything doesn't necessarily well, disappear. In the U.S., the Federal Trade Commission actually came in and gave Snapchat a hand slap and said, you guys are misrepresenting yourselves. Uh, and this was in 2014. They said, y you guys keep saying these pictures disappear. Then how come, you know, every time I get on a high school campus, uh, you know, there's a... I talk to the principal and they go, oh, you, you know, you should have seen what happened this earlier this week. There's this one girl who sent her boyfriend a picture because he mm -hmm. said, please send it. You know, they ended up breaking up. Boyfriend sent it to everyone. And before you know it, the whole school had it. And there's always that. I, I, I thought that picture disappeared, yeah. you know, and there's so many ways to harness it through either screenshots or they actually have software you can get in the Apple store, you know, to, to get pictures out of your cache and stuff so people these pictures you know aren't disappearing and and that's where my device my that's where my advice differs a little bit from the world's the world would say be careful what you take pictures of mm. and in this book I talk about be careful how you live mm -hmm. be careful how you live your life that you never know when someone's taking a picture and you know what uh th there's somebody who is watching all the time and we need to be careful how we live our lives and we definitely need to think before we post because you, and before you post something we should consider your mom and dad are going to see it your grandma's going to see it your future boss is going to see it Jesus is going to yeah. see it think before you hit that post button. And I, again, I love that in this book as well, that you point to scripture so many times and how does God see us in this and what has God directed us to do? I want to get to this point because I know a lot of parents are dealing with it, porn and sexual imagery, yeah. right? We think about all of these social media apps, device or um, uh, websites um, where there is so much sexual imagery and that I can speak as a parent is my biggest fear. It's my little innocent little Ethan and soon to be Joshua stumbling upon these things. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a reality. It's the world we live in. Um, it used to be something where, you know, in my age group when we were kids, if you wanted to find something like that, you had to go look for it. Now it's finding us and we have to kind of have to learn how to dodge it. And and really, as you're, you know, teaching young Ethan, you know, who's 11 now and, and you know, growing to be a young man, you know, you really want to teach him so that when he's 18, that he resolves like Daniel not to defile himself, mm -hmm. that he on his own makes that decision. So we need to give him as much information, as much truth right now. And that's why in the chapter, I spend some time showing a little bit of research, showing, showing secular research that there's people who are having so much of th those pictures that it's it's affecting their life, every aspect of their life, and, and they really want to escape that. So I want them to have that information now and understand the truth so they can flee from that. Mm, we only have a couple seconds left, but I want to talk about the importance of having a mentor. Yeah. And you talk about that, having a mentor, maybe even outside of your family, who you can talk to and say, yeah, I'm struggling with this, I've stumbled upon this on some sort of social media platform, how do I deal with it? 
Yeah, a lot of a lot of young people like the idea of having a coach or someone who cares. Yeah. So telling them to seek out someone that they can talk to, this is this is good stuff. And it's the one thing that every expert agrees on. I mean, there's research from Fuller Seminary, from Sticky Faith Research saying the power of multiple mentors, mm. all the way to secular research saying, you know, those who had role models making better decisions. So giving a young person that advice and saying seek out someone, um, it works so well that, you know, then in these discussion questions, hopefully there is that caring adult yeah. sitting down talking with them about this. So, Thank you so much once oh, again. Always. The book is called The Teen's Guide to Social Media and Mobile Devices, 21 Tips to Wise Posting in an Insecure World. I'm telling you, I'm giving this to my boys. It's definitely needed today. Stay with us. We'll be right back.